I'm Maddie Cornelius. I'm the Whitley County Family Consumer Sciences Agent, and I'm going to talk to you today a little bit about our electric pressure cooker. Instapot is a name brand for electric pressure cooker. Um, I personally have a, another brand that I use, um, so if it's electric pressure cooker, it'll do the same thing as an Instapot, but for today's purposes, we're going to use this Instapot to, um, to talk about a little bit of what all it can do. Um, I've got some accessories here, but I will show you what it comes with and how to use it, basic starter. But I love my electric pressure cooker and I hope I can help you a little bit. So with talking about electric pressure cooker and buying them and selecting them, you need to know what you're buying. So when you look on the box, you want to make sure that you understand all these functions that are on here. So look at the the different buttons, the different options for what you might use it for. Um, there's a meat, a beans, a steam, there's all sorts of different things. I know that Instapot has different different titles, they have a Lux, they have a Duo, so there's differences in them, but it's usually these functions on them. So make sure that you are paying attention to what functions are on here. One function that I like to look for is a manual button. The other brand that I have does not have a manual button, and if yours does not that you already have, that's totally okay. Um, you just pick the button of what's closest to it, and then you can adjust the time accordingly. And I will explain that in full detail in just a second. So, when you get your electric pressure cooker, it's going to come with a bunch of reading material. Um, this is um, actually a cookbook. And I think this is another cookbook. No, this is a user manual and this is another cookbook. It's a recipe book. So the user manual is very important. You need to read it and see how yours works. You need to make sure that you are very familiar with all the functions of it and that will help you with any questions that you might have. There's also some other resources that I will tell you about in a little bit. Instapot particularly is a Canadian brand so their measurements are a little bit different than ours so air cup i think is more than their cup so make sure that if you're in doubt always use the american cup because it uses more water electric pressure cookers are water driven so they build pressure with whatever liquid is in in your instapot so you need to make sure that anything you put in here to put under pressure that you are adding liquid to it if not, it is not correct. So I wanna go over a little bit of the parts of the electric pressure cooker. Most of them have an inner pot that comes out. It can be washed. This one's stainless steel. It's very thick, thick grade. Um, the other brands that I have seen have a Teflon inside. It's a non-stick. Um, Instapot does make to where you can buy that additionally. And um, it's a little bit thinner of a metal so it does bend real easy it doesn't last as long you can scratch the tip on so stainless steel is actually the preferred inside pot but you you have that option so this is the inner pot you know it can be taken out and washed this is your control panel and we will talk about that a little bit more in a minute and this is the lid the lid has this very important part here it moves back and forth so it has two different functions on it when it's pointing down it is sealing and that's important because your recipe will say make sure you sit the vent to seal so you want to make sure you're checking that if you go to the right or to the left that is venting so that's when your recipe is done that's what you're going to want to do to vent that and we will do a demonstration here in a minute so when i put this on put this lid on it makes a little sound I turn it, it tells me it's closed. So that's a good function of it. This little notch up here at the top is actually what's going to tell you if it comes to pressure or not. So that is a very important function of this. And on the inside of that, you will see there is a seal. This piece right here is a seal. And it can actually, um, it, it's very important to build up pressure. So you wanna make sure that your seal works. They actually make these to where you can buy extra ones. And sometimes you'll hear a big complaint on these as they hold odor. So if you make something that has something strong odor, 
you can probably smell it every time that you fix something. It's gonna smell just like a roast or something like that. But there's different solutions. You can buy a whole new one. I've heard you can put these, you can take it out and put it in the freezer and it will take it away. And then also this right here is the opposite side of this, this uh, venting ceiling. So you wanna make sure that's clear. You wanna make sure that you don't have any gunk, any buildup in that, because you want to make sure that that can seal or vent when it needs to. This little up and down, you want to make sure that that is free to move too, because that's going to tell you when pressure is built up and when it's not, when it's okay to open the lid and when it's not. I know there's a lot of horror stories about people open the lids before it doesn't come to pressure, so make sure that both of those things are, are clean before you use it. Okay, so some people ask, what's the point in getting a electric pressure cooker? My thing with an electric pressure cooker is you can set it and forget it. Yesterday I made a roast that would have normally took two hours in the oven. It took one hour in here and I used less energy and I set it and forget it. I put everything in it and then I went back to doing what I was doing and dinner was ready in no time. So. I think the thing about this is it really works for the on-the-go person and it also does really good if you're doing like a big meal so say your attention needs to be on the turkey or it needs to be on something like the ham you can put your sides in an instant pot and just sit it and forget it so that's a really awesome feature about these it has a lot of safety features built into it. We hear from, you know, former, the older stove top electric pressure cookers that there's horror stories that people, it was not safe. And I think that's what holds a lot of people back on these, but these have a lot more safety features in them. So please don't be scared. And if you have any questions, just send me an email or text me, call me, whatever. There's a lot of variety in these. They have, um, there's, this is a six quart, which is a normal size. They have a smaller size, which is a three quart, which is good for two people. This is probably good for four to six. And then they have a size bigger. They have an eight quart, and that's good for a large crowd or large items. Like you can do, you can do a whole chicken in here, but it would probably be more comfortable in an eight quart. And then also these can replace other appliances. Some of them have rice cookers in them. They can steam, they slow cook, just like a crock pot or a slow cooker that you have at home. So they replace all those other appliances. Make sure that you look at those features on there and you see what they are doing. So how do pressure cookers work? So what they do is they, they build pressure with steam. So like I said, you need that liquid in there to build that up. And it automatically, especially with these functions, will build that pressure according to what you tell it to do on the front. So that's really important. Like I said, always read your user manual. They're different for everyone. I have another brand that has, you know, different functions at the top here. So make sure that you are reading that to see exactly what venting and sealing means for your Instapot or, you know, what your functions actually do. So make sure you do that. And when you're adding liquid, you always want to make sure you have at least one cup in there. If not, um, it can't build pressure. So there, if you read a recipe, um, there's two different kinds of releases at the end of the recipe. So at the end of the recipe, you're going to see a natural release or you're going to see a quick release. So I will tell you those. The natural release is when this is done and I will show you how to tell when it's when your recipe is done. You're not gonna do anything to it. You're gonna let it come to natural air pressure naturally. So you're not gonna have to do anything. If it's a quick release, you're gonna have to turn this knob and steam is gonna shoot out. So that's a quick release. It's very important to pay attention to that in your recipes because they will let you know which one you actually need to do. And it can affect your tenderness of your meat it will it can make a cake fall um, yes you can do desserts and cakes in here but you need to make sure you pay attention to what kind of release is at the end of the recipe
I do want to say that pressure cookers, these pressure cookers are not, are not pressure canners. There are some that advertise that they are and that they can, but according to Air National Canning University, the University of Georgia, there has been no evidence that say that it actually brings your canned goods up to the proper temperature on the inside of the canned good. So please, actually tells us that you're taking your life into your own hands. So that's pretty serious. So please don't use this as a pressure canner. Use your traditional pressure canner to can items. But I do want to put that disclaimer. Even if there's a canning function on here, I know there's a few different brands that do, um, it is not safe. So there's no research been done on it yet. So please just be careful. So I think that's all I have as far as material for you. Um, I will go over some of these accessories that I have and I'm also going to do a water test with you. So with the water test, what we're going to do is we're going to put three cups of water in our electric pressure cooker and we are going to make sure that it comes to temperature. So this is always recommended to do when you buy a new one. So let's do that now. So I have my three cups of water here. I'm just gonna pour it in there. So when you're putting food in here, I do want to say that you do, do not need to overfill the pressure cooker or it will not have room to build pressure. So how do I know that I'm overfilling my pressure cooker? It tells me right here. I don't know if you can see that, but there is a, a hash mark here and it says max on there. So that is when you know you've reached the, the max that it can put in there. And sometimes when I'm doing a roast, I really get really close to that because you're putting the roast, you're putting all your carrots and potatoes and stuff on top. So make sure you're paying attention to that. So have three cups of water in there. So what I need to do now is I've got to check and make sure that I'm on, this says venting, this is sealing, and that's venting. So I'm going to put it on sealing because I want it to seal so it can build up pressure. I put it on and it played a little tune for me. So you'll see it's off. What I'm going to do, my pressure cooker actually has a manual button. So I'm going to put that on manual. And I'm going to put it on for three minutes. And then all I have to do is leave it. It's going to say three minutes there. And it's going to beep and tell me it understands. Okay. So now it says it's on. So now it's going to start building pressure. And you may start actually seeing steam shoot out here. But that's totally normal. It's just building. It's regulating that pressure. If it gets too much, it's going to let some out. And it's going to try to build it back up again. And then once it builds pressure, you'll see a three show up right here. And it's gonna count down itself. With the traditional pressure cookers that's on the stove, you actually have, you have to go back and forth and, and build up pressure and make sure the heat is right. But this one, it does it for you. So you don't have to, it'll actually say three and it'll count down three minutes and then it'll tell you when it's done. So I'm gonna go over a little bit of this accessories that I have. This actually came with the pressure cooker and I was very unaware of what it done until recently, until I watched a show on Food Network. They actually put rice in the bottom and they put their meat in the top and they built it to pressure so everything was done at the same time. I've heard that you can put leftovers in it and build pressure and it will uh, reheat leftovers. I think it's five minutes you put it in there for. So if yours come with this, do some research on it. It looks like a lunch bucket. It's got two different layers on it. I'll show you. See, it comes apart. It comes apart. But you can steam stuff if it has holes in the lid, but this one does not have holes in the lid. So I, I'm pretty sure this is not a steaming bucket. But um, I just wanted to show you that because some of them actually do come with it. Okay. These are just Pyrex or Anchorware Corningware dishes that I have in my house. 
um, or we have them here at the office and they actually work really good to bake stuff in. So you can bake, me and my FCS assistant do an apple spice dump cake and it is actually done in this um, Pyrex dish. So what you're gonna do is you are going to take a trivet. Every single one of these Instapods come with a trivet. That's what this is. That keeps food from touching the, the hot surface where the element is at the bottom. So it's really good if you're doing meat or anything like that. But every single one of them comes with this. Um, it has handles on it, just like a cannon basket would. But we put all of our ingredients in the, this uh, Pyrex dish and you set it in there and you can put it right down into your Instapot. Um, it's also the same for this corningware dish. It fits just the same and it goes right down into your Instapot. So that's a really neat thing if you're going to bake or do any kind of like lasagna or anything, you can do that in these dishes as well. So I just thought that's neat. That's something you don't have to go out and buy. I know we've all got those nesting bowls, so I wanted to show you that. So the trivet is really helpful in that, but it's also really helpful if you are doing a roast or a chicken, you, you can put that down first. That way it's not touching that hot surface. Um, there's other trivets that you can buy. This is another trivet and it actually sits up a little bit higher, like the legs are a little longer. I don't know if you can see that. Um, they're longer than these. These are little, little stubby legs and these are taller. So you would need that if you are doing like a cheesecake and you don't want it touching the water that you put in the bottom because remember you always have to have at least one cup in there. That's at least. So if you have two cups, you don't want your pan sitting in that water. So this sets it up just a little bit higher than say this one would. So you don't have hardly any, so it would be sitting in there. But even if that's all that you have, that's perfectly fine. What you're gonna do is you're gonna wrap this bottom with aluminum foil to keep the water out. So it's totally fine if you don't have one of these. I'm just showing you options of what's there. Another cool thing that you can do in an Instapot is hard boil eggs. And so this is a trivet, it's silicone, it bends. Um, and you can put eggs in there. You don't have to have one of these. Um, you can actually just use your trivet and set eggs on the top of it. But this one has actually holes that you can put in there. This is perfect for Easter. If you're hard boiling eggs, you can do these super quick in here and they're perfect. The yolks aren't green, they are completely done. So I highly recommend doing that. This is a taller trivet, like what I just showed you. Where'd it go? See, it's a taller one, but it has a place for eggs as well. So you might could put some eggs on the bottom, put some more eggs on the top, and you can do double the amount of eggs. So I wanted to show you that as well. These are something you may have at your house. These are silicone muffin tins or muffin cups. Um, you can put them in your Instapot as well and um, look up recipes for um, Instapot egg cups. You could do like omelets in here. So you scramble your eggs and put, you know, ham, cheese, whatever you want to in there. And then you put them in your Instapot on a trivet and you can have egg breakfast cups. There is an Instapot or electric pressure cooker accessory that does this, but these work just as well. They're heat resistant because they can go into the oven, so you want to make sure that it's heat resistant. Um, steam just shot out of here, so I know it's trying to regulate. I can't see if it has time on there or not, but um, also Instapot makes all sorts of accessories that fit just their pot, so you want to make sure that your Instapot electric pressure cooker, if you're buying accessories specifically like this, then you are going to want to make sure it's your brand. So this is a silicone lid that fits the Instapot insert and it fits it specifically, but it's silicone too. And I know that when I get done making something, I immediately want to put it in the fridge. So this makes it easier, you know, I dip out of it I can put this lid on, stick it right into the fridge after it cools a little bit, 
you don't want to stick a hot pot in the refrigerator because it'll bring down your fridge tip. So make sure that you are letting it cool, but you can actually buy this to put it on there. Um, it's a really, really handy thing. As you will see, our pot is now counting down. It has a three on it. So you don't have to do anything. That probably took about five minutes for it to come to pressure and I can hear it boiling in there. So that's totally normal. Um, I do wanna say that you wanna make sure your area, your surface, your countertop is clear around it because it does get hot to the touch. So we don't recommend that you set this and then leave it. Don't, um, don't set it before work and then come back because it does actually get really hot. So make sure that you, you have plenty of space around it. Uh, you can use it as a slow cooker, but when you use it as a slow cooker, you don't actually seal it. You wanna make sure that it is on venting. So the whole time that it's slow cooking, it has that airflow. So a couple resources I wanna tell you about. Um, there's a couple Facebook groups that I really enjoy. Um, there's one called Under Pressure, and it's by an extension office. I think they're in Iowa, maybe. Um, it's a whole Facebook community, and they have research-based recipes. So it's a really, really neat group. They also talk tips and tricks and swap recipes, or they'll tell you when pressure cookers are on sale at different places online usually. Um, I really enjoy that community. Also, Instapot has a community. Um, Instapot, I think that's what it's called. It's a group, so you have to request to join just like you do the extension one. But I've got some really good tips and tricks on that. And uh, one specifically is that your Instapot can be used as a double boiler. I think that's really neat. Um, I used it actually a lot this Christmas making candy and stuff to melt chocolate. You can get some really good tips and tricks on the internet. I tell people you can Pinterest Instapot recipes. It's done. You can Pinterest Instapot recipes and they'll work for any pressure cooker. So Instapot, like I said, is a brand name, just like Velveeta is to cheese. It's just a brand. So this is counting down. See that L and it has all zeros. So that's going to count for you if you're doing a natural release, it'll count by the minute. So if it tells you at the end to do a natural release for 10 minutes, you are going to make sure it says L on there and then 10. And then you know you can release that pressure. If it tells you to let it come to a natural uh, pressure all on its own, then you don't have to do anything, but make sure that there's a tab up here at the top. You want to make sure that that is lowered, that that is down. But like I said, read your manual because it will tell you when the pressure is all out of your pressure cooker. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to vent this for you. So it's going to be a quick release. So what you're going to do is you are going to turn this, this knob to venting, and this is gonna be a quick release. So I'm gonna do that now, and steam is gonna shoot everywhere. So that is totally normal. Steam is going to shoot out. That's what you want it to do. Um, I recommend not having this close to a cabinet or a wall that has wallpaper or paint that you don't want to peel off because the steam is really hot. So it can peel wallpaper steam. They make things called steam diverters and they have those on, on Amazon that will actually push that steam a different direction. So if you wanted to invest in that, um, nine or ten dollars is all it is I think but um, that keeps it off your cabinets see it's got two minutes it's been two minutes since it has finished coming to pressure so I like that feature on these that it actually counts down for you so this is not quit yet and I know that when I hear a click this back button back here is gonna 
go down. It just went down. So that means that's safe for me to open. Simple as that. That's a good safety feature. It's, it's ready for me to open. You always want to make sure that you open that away from your face because that steam is really hot. So make sure you do that. It was really quick and it was really easy. And um, this will keep counting for you. That is actually a keep warm feature. So if you have this plugged in, say at a church, it's gonna keep it warm for you. Um, so if you don't want it to do that, all you have to do is hit cancel and it goes back to the off. So I think that's really cool. Another feature that I haven't discussed on here with you is the saute function. What this does is, so if you want to saute ground beef before you're making chili, all you have to do is put that ground beef in here that's been thawed out, hit the saute button. It's gonna say 30 on there. It's gonna saute that for you. So it's gonna be like an electric skillet. So it's gonna just heat up that bottom and you can chop up ground beef. Um, I actually browned my roast yesterday on each side. Um, you just put it on saute. This is what I use for a double boiler. So I have two cups of water in my insert. I put saute on, it boils water in no time. And what you're gonna do is put a heat resistant bowl on top. I used a glass bowl. You put it on top, put your chocolate in there and it melts in no time. So I think that's a really cool tip that I got from the Facebook community and I wanted to share it with you today because it made my life a lot easier. If you all have any questions, just let me know. I can give you recipes, mac and cheese, homemade mac and cheese is wonderful in here. Hard boiled eggs, people look up recipes for potato salad. Super easy to cut up your potatoes, put in there and you actually put your eggs on top in the shell raw eggs you put them on top of your potatoes and it all gets done at the same time so the instant pot has made life so much easier for me and for my family i know my mom uses it a lot so just make sure that you're exploring everything and don't be scared uh, i know it's really easy to get scared of pressure cookers because of all the stories so just make sure that you're having a good time with it explore i've done a cheesecake perfect cheesecake um, it has to natural release but it does not crack if you are patient with it, it will not crack the top. It'll be a perfect cheesecake. Um, dump cakes, hard boiled eggs, um, omelets. You can do anything in here, not just soups, uh, chilies. You can do all sorts of stuff. So make sure you're exploring that, and I hope I've helped you today. Thanks.